It was six days full of fun, entertainment, and of course, music. Headliners included Paramore, SZA, Casey Musgraves, among others. Energy and excitement were high during ACL Fest. Many people came with friends to experience the festival together. I think the atmosphere, everyone here is so nice, and there's so many fun things to look at, so I think just the overall atmosphere. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. I've gotten to hang out with so many people and see so many artists, so it's been a lot of fun. Others opted to meet some new companions along the way to take in the sights and sounds with. It's wonderful, and I, I've met some cool people so far. Uh, it's been a great time, you know, hanging out with friends and everything. It's really fun. Austin City Limits is celebrating their 21st year right here at Zilker Park. With over 50 vendors and 100 artists, attendees have a lot to choose from. For Bobcat Update, I'm Mason Moore. The Pow Wow is held at the Meadow Center on Spring Lake. The festival is important for sharing Native traditions with the hope that current and future generations carry them forward. Celebrating culture is really a, a cornerstone of our organization. Uh, our, one of our taglines is La Cultura Cura, which means culture cures. And for us, uh, you know, these springs are sacred, so they, they mean a lot to us. Pow Wow featured two days of native dancing, storytelling, and attire. It's the first time they went around for the first honor beat, she wasn't able to walk. And on the third honor beat, she started dancing. The location of the Sacred Springs Pow Wow is no coincidence. Spring Lake here in San Marcos has been an important part of the Native American community for millennia. It has been continuously inhabited for over 11,000 years. For Bobcat Update, I'm Mason Moore. Two San Martians thought that they would be the perfect people to capture the city spirit in a unique way. I think there's always been sort of a disconnect between the perspectives of San Marcos, the, the college town, and the local perspective. And so as somebody who sort of lived through both, I thought that for people of both of those perspectives to be seeing these different places that mean different things to different people, I felt like it could sort of bridge that gap of disconnection between those two groups of people. A really cool kind of passion project for the city and just kind of thinking of ways that could really help out with like the local community and cool local businesses. Whenever Luke kind of came to me with the idea, I was like, oh, that's perfect because San Marcos is just such a, a character and like cool like animated town and it's been, been really cool just to see how it, can, how it can help people out and just a lot of love for the city. A lot of people really love it so it's cool just seeing seeing that get reciprocated back. The creators even enlisted the help of a local celebrity. It was an honor to be considered to, to be on that deck of cards because it is all about San Marcos. It is, is all about the community of San Marcos and we have a wonderful community here. There has been a positive reception to the cards throughout the San Marcos community. I think it's special because everyone can have a connection to each card because it's a different event and different piece of San Marcos so we all have a different relationship to that specific place. Each card has a different image and story, so there's something on them for everyone. For Bobcat Update, I'm Courtney Ford. Campus shuttles have had to make detours. This has forced students to look for other ways to get to campus. Yeah, I usually I try to go to the parking lot first, and uh, lately that has not been working out. So I need to drive around to find a spot. And having all these road closures makes it very difficult to just uh, navigate around. It's just another thing when you're already in a rush, you're going, going to class, you, you don't want to think about, you know, where to park when you're trying to study for a test or get ready for class. Situated on the corner of Sesson Drive and Academy Street is a Texas State Recreation Center. Before construction, Texas State had four different shuttle routes that stopped at that location. Now, students find it more difficult to get there. They had to stop there, like you, I mentioned before, and just even just going through traffic, trying to find a way to park at the wreck, having the academy blocked off, definitely uh, it makes it harder to find parking at the wreck and also even just getting to the wreck and that side of campus. The construction is scheduled to be completed in 2024. For Bobcat Update, I'm Mason Moore. The CBI Club's mission is to help students make the connections they need before entering the industry. CBI is the first student broadcasting organization, so it gives a lot of opportunity 
you know, for students. So it's a great, you know, place for students to have a co connect with professional broadcasters. The club invites professionals in the field to speak to students. Being able to be around people that like the same thing as you and share the same ideas, it really helps because you, you have connections with people, you start to build up uh, bonds and that can help out in your future endeavors. And so I think that having a program like this is really important. The club also helps students learn skills and techniques that go into making a broadcast happen. We have different workshops, we have like things for people to work on their resume, maybe they want to learn how to use Premiere. And it's sort of a place where we can build a community of all these different um, people with the same interests.